Well, just now the division bell was out of order, so we need to call members back. So just now I said that we would resume at 11.13 a.m. But now the division bell is in order. It's ringing. Oh, this is a backup bell. Anyway, I've said 11.13 a.m. All right, 11.13 a.m. I have already announced that we'll resume at 11.13 a.m. because I've already said that we'll allow 10 minutes for secretariat staff to call members back. We need more time. We'll resume at 11.13 a.m. and then we'll proceed to the vote. Members, please take note of that. 11.13 a.m. This morning, we discovered that the division bell was out of order. So we had to use the backup bell. But just now, we said that we had to give more time for secretariat staff to call members back. We'll allow for 10 minutes. I've already announced the time, 11.13 a.m. Yes, we need more time to notify members. I already made the announcement. Members should have uh, heard that.
All right, members, let's proceed to the vote. Just now, we're discussing Liantang, Hong Yun, Wai Boundary Control Point and Associated Works, construction of boundary control point buildings and associated facilities. Will those members who favor the funding proposal please raise their hands? As the bell is out of order, we have to do it by a show of hands. Those in favor, please raise their hands. The clerk will read out the names. Ibrahim Shah, Chen Yun Han, Elizabeth Quart, Michael Tian, Alice Mack, Lo Wai Kwok, Chen Kim Po, Yu Si Wing, Chen Hak Ken, Chen Kam Lam, Leung Chi Chung, Ip Kwok Him, Michael Tian, uh, James Tian. Uh, it should be James Tian, isn't it? Clark? Yes, yeah, sorry. It should be James Tian. Those against, please raise their hands. Those against, Emily Lau, Wu Chi Wai, James To, Kenneth Chan, Gary Fan, Albert Chan, Chan Chi Chin, Fernando Chang, Frederick Fong. Thirteen in favor, nine against. I declare the proposal supported, and the proposal will go to the PWSC for further vetting. Thank you, government officials. Let's proceed to item five on the agenda, revision of fees and charges for services under the purview of the Lands Department under the Land Survey Fees Regulation, Cap 473A. Secretariat staff, please invite the government representatives to come in. Let me welcome government representatives. I'm not going to introduce them one by one because you'll find their attendance uh, list in front of you. I now invite the administration to present the paper to us. Thank you. This is in relation to revision of fees and charges. Under CAF 473A, studies and services under the purview of the Lands Department. Well, in line with the user pays principle, the government has the policy that fees should in general be set at levels sufficient to recover the full cost of providing the services. In the schedule under CAF 473A, in relation um, to uh, Lands Department uh, services, uh, that do not directly affect people's livelihood or uh, general business activities. They are in relation to, say, for example, uh, registration fees for sur uh, for surveyors. A review of the cost of provision of services at the 2014-15 price level was carried out, and the result shows that uh, we cannot fully recover the cost. The cost recovery rate was uh, shown to be 79.2% to 87.18%. 
we will avoid a steep fee increase. We propose to increase the fee levels um, gradually. There will be revision of uh, seven government fees and charges by approximately 10 percent. We believe that it will not have a significant uh, impact on those uh, who will be affected. And in 2012, in relation to the seven fees and charges, we have introduced an increase of about a 10 percent based on the user pays principle. And at that time, the cost recovery rate was about 79 to 87 percent. If the panel agrees, we reckon that uh, the implementation of the revision will uh, start before the end of the, this legislative year. We reckon that will be an additional uh, increase of um, income by about 0 0.326 million dollars a year. Mr. Albert Chan, four minutes, question and answer. I do not disagree with the general principle, but when it comes to the nature of the services, well, a lot of these services are provided by people. And if they can strengthen uh, the computer program or the internet service, it will bring down cost significantly. I don't know if any of the services under this revision can be done um, via the internet and fees charged online because this will enhance a service because the professionals will have access to the information at a lower cost faster and for the government it will also reduce pressure on manpower. Who is to take this question, Mr. Ng? Assistant Director, we have already used computer programs. Say, for example, plan submission uh, by recognized uh, surveyor is that with online. But we have, haven't started um, collecting fees online. Well, what's something I always do is uh, to search for aerial photos. And I have to go to the lens department personally to do it. It is ridiculous because all these information is uh, on the computer. And you're only searching through the records. And I don't know whether there is a similar situation for professional services that the professionals will have to go personally to the lands department. If the service can be provided or online, it will be better because, well, a lot of online services are used. It's only it's a waste of resources if you have to go there personally. Can you enhance the service? So that you can uh, move with move ahead with the times. Can you give us more information, Mr. Mm? <coughs> Mr. Chan mentioned about searching for aerial photos. Well, we already provide the service online. You can use the Hong Kong Map Service. This is a website. You can purchase aerial photos. You don't have to go to the district land, um, lands office. We also have a plan to expand our online service. You can make inquiries and purchase uh, plans online. But it will take 20 months to develop the service. Are there any other services that can only be provided when you go there in person? Is there any potential for these services uh, to shift to um, the virtual world? A lot of uh, products, graphs, and maps can be purchased online. 
uh, you can also um, place an order for hard for uh, hard copy maps online. Are there any services that require attending the uh, office personally that has got the potential to uh, be developed to, to be provided online? Well, that is uh, on top of these seven services. We're moving towards an electronic platform, including online services. Plans can be submitted electronically. We accept that. Well, I don't know if uh, any if professional body, say for example the Institute of Engineers or, or uh, that of the surveyors, have any views in relation to the visa revision. <coughs> Mr. Chen, they are also very concerned about uh, uh, the matter you asked about. Electronic services can shorten uh, the time and reduce resources required. This will also uh, reduce manpower requirement. A lot of uh, professional bodies would like the administration to put in more resources to speed up the development in this direction. Mr. Law, what is the current situation? I sense that uh, members don't object to uh, the provoke to the revision proposed. We agree with um, members' views. That is uh, the direction for development. Using different initiatives and measures, we aim at uh, streamlining the process and, in and increasing efficiency. The general direction is to make more use of uh, the electronic means. We make use of computer programs and online platforms as far as possible. We will move along this uh, general direction. And I'd like to add that uh, when we review the, uh, co the uh, fees level of our services, we have already considered cost reduction measures. We share members' views. As far as practicable, we uh, we will put um, these measures in pl in place. Any other questions? If not, that is the end of this item. I thank the officials for attending. Next is item six. Progress update of the proposed amendments to the building standards of sanitary fitments, plumbing, drainage works, and latrines regulations, Cap 123I. Please invite the administration to join us. Let me welcome a government officials. I'll dispense with the introduction. You'll find the attendance list in front of you. Please give us a brief introduction of the paper. Yes. Thank you. I will briefly introduce this paper. This paper briefs members on the progress of the exercise to amend the building standards of uh, sanitary fitments, plumbing, drainage works, and lettering regulations. In, re in particular, the plans our plans to adopt uh, uh, the approach, and in um, 
February and November 2012, we have um, taken members uh, through our uh, proposal. This is in relation to enhancing the uh, standards. Uh, in short, to increase the number of uh, sanitary fitments in toilets. And the second part is to replace the existing prescriptive requirement by performance-based requirement to better cater for advancement in building technology. In short, well, for say um, pumps, uh, we use uh, size dimensions, and under the uh, under the proposal, we use performance-based requirements. That is, as long as uh, they uh, perform to a certain standard, we will uh, accept that. These regulations were first made in 1959, so we uh, aim to rationalize the provisions and bring them up to date. Originally, we planned for an overall amendment, but when it comes to the uh, drafting, we realize that uh, the scope of the amendments uh, is quite wide and is rather complex in nature, and we decide that we need to repeal the regulations and enact a new piece of legislation. As a result, it will take uh, a rather long time. We understand that uh, the public and members would like to see the implementation of uh, enhancement of standards as soon as possible. Hence, we will adopt a two-stage approach. With member support at the beginning of this year, we will introduce the legislation to uh, LegCo to uh, deal with increase in uh, sanitary fitment, say, for example, the number of um, toilets in female toilets. In 2012, the Buildings Department in November updated their <laughs> practice notes. That is, the practice notes for authorized persons, registered structural engineers, and registered geotechnical engineers. For voluntary adoption by the building industry of the enhancement. We have already put in the practice notes and the proposed amendments. At the beginning of um, this year, we will be, we hope, that we will be able to introduce our proposal to the LegCo. Then we'll proceed to stage two. So much for my briefing. Thank you. Question time for members. I suggest that we accord four minutes to each member, including questions and answers. First, Mr. Wu Wai. Thank you, Chairman. The paper mentions that the number of uh, water closets in female toilets will be increased. I'd like to know how they arrived at the standard of 1.5. Is envisaged that the waiting time would not be affected and the time and situation of males and females using toilets had been examined before proposing the standard. What about the standard of 1.5? Will we have the urine facilities as well as cubicles for male toilets? But for female toilets, we only have cubicles. So are they saying that the number of cubicles in female toilets should be 1.5 times the total of uh, urine facilities and cubicles in male toilets. Well, Mr. Chairman, let me explain the formula to you. For shopping malls and cinemas, for example, we are using the ratio of one to one for males to females. Say if there are 150 seats in the cinema, and on the average 125 males and 125 females go to the cinema. The Buildings Department then commissioned a consultant to carry out on-site inspection as well as conduct an interview to arrive at figures. And we took reference from the USA, the UK and Singapore. 
and we arrived uh, at the ratio of 1 to 1.5. That is for every male or for 100 males going to the cinema, there will be 150 females going to the cinema. And that's how we arrived uh, at the standard for the formula. Just now, Mr. Wu asked about the method of counting. We don't count the cubicles inside the toilets. We count the number of males and females going to a cinema, for example. Previously, we put the ratio at 100 to 100. Now, we propose 100 to 150. In November 2012, in the paper we gave you, we provided some information for the male toilets. There won't be any increases under the new proposal that will not affect the waiting time for males. At the moment, the waiting time is relatively short, or rather, there's no waiting time at all. But uh, for female toilets, when the bigger the shopping mall, the bigger the cinema, the more female toilet facilities should be provided. Take, for example, a shopping mall of 3,500 square meters. In the past, for the, fem for the male toilets, five closets, and then six closets in the female toilet. After the amendment, there will be four in the male toilet uh, and 11 in the female toilet, almost a 100% increase. Because uh, the time of usage on the part of females is different from that for males. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, they're still using the number of closets as the standard, instead of taking into account uh, the urination facility for or the urinal facility for males. And of course, uh, on the average, females spend more time in toilets than males. So if you take into account the urinals, then perhaps you can further increase the number of cubicles in the female toilet. I'd like to know whether or not that's the case. For old shopping malls, will this new regulation affect them? Under what circumstances will old shopping malls be required to satisfy the new standard? Well, Mr. Wu, time's up is for you. Time's up for you. So I'll ask him to answer in the second round. Next, Dr. Elizabeth Quatt. Mr. Chairman, Hong Kong females have been waiting for a long, long time for this time to come because we have uh, to wait for a long, long time when we queue up for female toilets in shopping malls. In fact, many public facilities are very crowded at the moment insofar as this is concerned. Apart from increasing the number of cubicles in female toilets, I now see that sometimes uh, men have to queue up for male toilets as well. Well, I understand that male facilities may be reduced uh, and female facilities will be increased. Still, with that proposed increase, I'm worried that the increase is still not enough. And by reducing the male facilities, men may have to wait longer. For male toilets, if you don't reduce the number of cubicles and urinals, while at the same time you increase the facilities for female toilets, that would be better. Mr. Chairman, when the Buildings Department commissioned the consultant to conduct the study, they already took into account the number of facilities in the male toilet because uh, from the figures I gave you just now, you see that we only propose a slight decrease. It's not much different from the assessment of the consultant back then. 
Well, of course, it's ideal for me to increase the facilities for both male and female toilets. But then, given the same area in a shopping mall or a cinema, we're already proposing an increase, and we have to take care of the use of space as well. We believe our proposal is an appropriate balance. Members need not worry. We seem to be reducing male facilities, but there will not be any actual impact. Well, no actual impact. Do you mean that by slightly decreasing the facilities for male toilets, men won't have to wait longer, right? Well, in most cases, that would be the situation, because at the moment, in most cases, men do not have to queue up for. Male toilets, but I dare not say that、uh, there won't be any impact at all. Mr. Chairman, we always mention family-friendly policies. On a lot of occasions, I already asked the administration to consider hygiene requirements for not just females but children and elderly people. We should have separate. Breastfeeding facilities, as well as napkin changing facilities for female toilets, but here I don't see any consideration on that. So I'd like to ask the administration whether he it's going to deliberate on those fronts as well, Mr. Chairman. I understand the concern of Dr. Quat in society. There are. Demands for children facilities, elderly facilities, napkin changing, breastfeeding facilities. There are also proposals for unisex toilet facilities as society advances. We keep an open mind on this. We're not saying that we can't do those, but here we want to set a minimum statutory standard. Take for example, babysitting room. It is not directly related to the hygiene of buildings, so it is different from the terms of reference of the buildings ordinance. We'll reflect that piece of opinion to the relevant policy bureau. Secondly, in law, we do not propose any legislative amendments. But in terms of actual operations for buildings, babysitting rooms, unisex toilets, toilet cubicles that facilitate children, etc., the practice note promulgated by the buildings department already covers that. So we're trying to set a minimum statutory standard only, Mr. Abachan, Chairman. First of all, I welcome the proposed legislative amendment as well as the updating of the practice note. However, well, in principle, I don't think anybody will oppose. These proposals, because、uh, enhancement of facilities will help everybody, but in terms of procedures, very often complicated issues may result. Well, some operators and industries may be affected, so operational support is important. Now you target shopping malls. Shopping arcades and cinemas, but you see, we'll see a lot of building repair and maintenance works on the pipeline in the coming years because we have eighty to ninety thousand such buildings in the queue. So I'd like to know how you are going to handle those buildings, and. Licensing may also be involved. For example, the e trees. Well, I think this question should be asked by Mr. Tommy Chung, not me. In the past, I assisted 
not a few eateries uh, in the handling of uh, licensing issues. Well, a separate license may have to be issued for a change of bus, a change of operator, or refurbishment work. Well, after this amendment, some establishments may not be able to take out a license. And then for the new practice note, just now some members asked about women and children. What about the disabled? What about the toilets for the disabled? Will you require the facilities be enhanced in the same exercise? Mr. Chang, well, I'll try to answer those three questions. I may defer to the BD colleagues. Well, this is actually question two of Mr. Wu. For buildings, the existing regulation does not have retrospective effects. That is, we only cover new buildings. But for old buildings with additional works, additional building works, repair and maintenance, if we're talking about minor works, this new regulation will not affect them. But for major works, this new regulation will affect them. As for licensing of eateries, Mr. Chan's question is very good. When or oh, before we put forth this proposal, we consulted the FVHD. Will match the licensing criteria. So, Mr. Albert Chan's uh, concern can be addressed. I'll defer to the Buildings Department for the remaining question. For the toilets for the disabled, we already enhanced the standard in 2008. The design inside such uh, toilets will meet the need of the disabled persons more. For these uh, persons with disabilities, that is PWDs, they should have barrier-free access to toilet facilities. That is, uh, they shouldn't be put inside male or female toilets. Uh, they should be uh, they should be unisex uh, toilets. Second round, Mr. Wu. Four minutes, question and answer. Thank you. Just a number of points for follow-up. First, I mentioned this before. Under the regulation, uh, only new buildings are covered. And you also mentioned that uh, licensing for uh, eateries is related. Do you mean that under the new standard, Restaurants are required to meet the requirements. So if it's a new license, they will have to meet the new standards. And is there um, a minimum size of uh, restaurants that have to meet this uh, requirements because for small restaurants they may not be able to meet the standard. And what about government uh, toilets? Are there any plans to retrofit public toilets to bring them uh, up to date with the new standards? Say, for example, um, to toilet in public places and to to public toilets that are frequently used. I will also um, answer Mr. Wu's previous question in relation to water closets and urinals. Well, first, to Mr. Wu's recent question, government toilets. Of course, um, they will take into account the latest requirements, including those under the buildings department. For existing buildings, there may be difficulties. Say, for example, when it comes to ritual fitting, there may be a technical difficulties to bring them up to date. But when it comes to new buildings, um, they will um, meet the latest standards. Previous question, uh, and in relation to restaurants, the new requirements 
applies to uh, new applications and not renewals when it comes to restaurants. There is no uh, retrospective effect. For small restaurants, um, if they are required to meet the new requirements, uh, they maybe they will have to use most of the area of the restaurant as a toilet. Well, we have a relaxed uh, um, building, say, for example, for uh, those that cater for 30 people. Well, it's number of sanitary fitments provided is uh, lower than the uh, standards, and that is including water closets and urinals. It's a total. Well, now you now use the ratio of 1 to 1.5. I understand that it is in relation to the number of users and not the ratio of uh, water closet or um, of cubicles. You will have to uh, translate it into the number of uh, water closets to show us the picture. When it comes to public toilets, do you have any plans to retrofit them or uh, renovate them to bring them up to the latest standard? As I said, the uh, basically the administ uh, the government will take into account the latest requirement. I will confirm with the public works um, colleagues. Next, Miss Elizabeth Quant. I heard from the administration that uh, when it comes to children and uh, nursery facilities, they are not covered under the um, under the standards under the proposal in the proposal. I, I would like them to take that into consideration because. Well, currently, toilets nowadays are not really suitable for children. They can't really use it because uh, they are too too tall. The facilities are too tall for them to reach. And if they if children can't use it, then there will be uh, hygiene problems. And do you think that uh, babies nursing their uh, mothers nursing their baby in toilets is uh, hygienic? And in male toilets, there are no changing facilities for fathers to use. I don't agree that this is not related to uh, standards of sanitary fitments. If you still think, uh, if you still think like that, I think uh, you will have to reflect on your um, understanding on this issue. Consider a, a separate nursery or changing facility. Just separate them from the toilets to maintain hygiene standards. Thank you. Well, the, um, breastfeeding rooms is not directly related to uh, s s sanitary of the building. This is not like uh, sewage pipes, but uh, I will uh, reflect Ms. Quartz's view to the relevant department. What about children? Anything to add? No. Well, but when it comes to children using the toilet, then it's related to sewage. Why don't you? Uh, consider redesigning the toilet. Thank you. The proposed amendments are related to the le to the lowest um, standard of sanitary fitments for other facilities. Say, for example, unisex uh, toilets and toilets for children. Uh, you'll find the information in the practice notes. We think that at this stage, 
when it said uh, it will be better for it to be adopted on a voluntary basis because if we legislate for it, it will be a statutory requirement. You see that although it's not a statutory requirement in a lot of shopping malls, there are um, washing basins that are lower and for children to use. I've taken my boy to the toilet and uh, he's used it. And as I said at the outset, we keep an open mind. We're willing to follow it up and continue discussing about this. Is it the case that, uh, well, can you tell me how many um, toilet facilities for children to use in public toilets and uh, toilets in government buildings? We don't have the information. If the government doesn't do it, how do they expect developers to do it. If you do not legislate, then no one will do it. And currently, only um, high-end shopping malls put in children's uh, toilets. This is not a family-friendly. Children are afraid to use toilets because they are afraid that they will fall into the toilet. Mr. Albert Chan, I would like to talk about licensing for restaurants. It may be a moot point, but it is actually a complicated issue. Well, you mentioned that there are various sizes when it comes to restaurants and different forms when it comes to the license and new application and uh, or renewals. Sometimes a new application involves just a transfer of operator, the establishment itself remains unchanged. But you, if you change the requirements for toilets, then the uh, restaurant may not get a license. But you have to realize that there are uh, constraints, say, for example, related to the buildings. And sometimes restaurants uh, is part of a shopping mall. I agree with um, the general uh, the general amendments proposed. The deputy director answered questions related to uh, toilets for the disabled, but that is in relation to new buildings and uh, shopping malls only. What about existing ones? Will there be any f uh, improvement works? You can't improve female toilets without improving toilets for the disabled. Will the proposed amendments uh, bring Disaster, disastrous implications for restaurants, including bars. Well, I think this question should be asked by the um, Business Professions Alliance. And, and the Liberal Party, not me. I think it's unfair to some people. I've dealt with a lot of these um, disputes over license in the past. Well, I thank Mr. Chan for his point. Let me say that when we were working out the new standard, we have consulted extensively, but we, re we will reflect on Mr. Chan's point. Well, when it comes to uh, commonly used toilets, I think there won't be too uh, much difficulty, but when it comes to having toilets inside the establishment, there may be some uh, difficulty. <laughs> Sometimes the layout of the building is such that you cannot add to the toilets. Because if you add to it, then uh, it will be a complete overhaul of the plan. Add 
adding a water closet is easy, but if you have to change the entire layout, it may be expensive and complicated. It may be disastrous for some restaurants. I asked uh, the departments to consider it because it may affect restaurants, and uh, some restaurants may not be able to get a license simply because of uh, the number of closets. Mr. Ray Chan. Well, when it comes to um, female toilets and toilets, I think it's a rather outdated issue because it's on it's uh, built on the premise that um, one gender may attack the other inside the same toilet. Well, basically, it's, it's, it says that um, well, uh, when a, 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 a man is in the in a female toilet, then the, the man may attack the the woman. But in a female toilet, very often you'll find a cleaning lady inside. In overseas toilets, uh, most of them are unisex, catering for um, people with uh, different gender orientation, uh, people with disabilities, and children. Has the administration considered? Unisex toilets. The advantage is that, uh, well, if you uh, bring a child of a different sex to the toilet, it will be e it will be easier. And sometimes, um, um, a woman dressed like a man entering a female toilet may cause people to panic. So, will you consider um, along this direction in the future? When the buildings department set down the uh, new requirements, uh, they have consulted the trade and they have also taken into reference overseas practice. And I'm told that uh, before implementation of unisex toilets, uh, they will have to conduct a uh, Detailed studies. Well, as the member mentioned, there may be security issues, and uh, different <coughs> age groups or different uh, gender may have uh, different um, requirement, different requirements of a um, sanitary uh, level, and we also have to take into our cultural differences. <coughs> For unisex toilets, they take up a bigger area than other toilets. Of course, you'll say that for the residual space, we'd better use it for female toilets because women have to wait for longer. Well, we'll consider all these opinion still in 2012, in November that year, when the BD promulgated the practice note for the reference of the industry, they already provided guidelines to the industry. And now we're using a piece of legislation to set the minimum statutory standard. Of course, we welcome the industry to take their own commercial considerations and provide even better facilities. Anyway, we'll consider Mr. Chan's opinion. There are different voices in society. Well, this is a piece of legislation. If the administration keeps an open mind, it should take the lead to start unisex toilets in government premises so as to carry out an experiment on a larger scale. If you just encourage the industry to do that, it's very difficult to assess the effectiveness. Mr. Chairman, as we mentioned, in society, there's not yet consensus on unisex toilets. There are also different considerations, like uh, cultural differences. Well, we need some time to consider that idea. Any more comments? If not, so much for this discussion. Thank you very much, government representatives.
any other business. If there's no other business, meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.